I have liked or loved every single Zack Snyder movie except for one. And that was Sucker Punch. 300, loved it. Watchmen, I liked it. I, most people love or hate that movie. I liked it. I, I didn't love it, but I liked it. Legends of the Guardian, The Owls of Gaul, I really liked that film. Sucker Punch, the one film I didn't like. That's it. Man of Steel, my loyalty forever, one of my favorite comic book movies ever. I love Man of Steel. I will always be that fan, that movie's number one fan. Batman vs. Superman, John, Dawn of Justice, I liked it. Justice League, even the theatrical version, I liked. Mm -hmm. The HBO version, I liked even more. And his most recent film, Army of the Dead, I had a good time at. So I have literally liked or loved every single Zack Snyder movie up till now, except for the one, except for Sucker Punch. <clears throat> Heard some concerning things <laughs> going into uh, going into seeing Rebel Moon. Granted, <laughs> I was not prepared for how bad this movie is. Oh man! This I may be a bit of a Zack Snyder fanboy. This is not a good movie. This is a bad film. Uh, with some of the most horrendously written dialogue I have ever. And it, and it starts off weak because it starts off with Sophia Batella. And who doesn't love Sophia Batella? You see her on a farm, right? With a horse plowing some ground with this background, right? It visually looks so bad. It looked like she was literally standing on a stage with a big stage backdrop banner behind her. And that was supposed to be outer space behind her. Well, and I'm like, if this was a Wes Anderson film, then you would accept that. Yes, I would totally accept that. <laughs> but I'm like, oh, okay, that doesn't look good. Um, and then, I mean, I knew it was very much influenced by, like, say, Seven Samurai and that sci-fi film Battle Beyond the Stars. I mean, it, it's just a straight-up Battle Beyond the Stars ripoff. It just it just completely is. That 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 right there, the beginning, like you said, it, it didn't bother me when I knew it would be a, a repeated throughout the whole film, like the backdrop thing. Right. Like, so I got used to it. So that didn't bother me as much as it did with you, but I did notice it. Yeah. I, I'll be honest with you. I think a lot of stuff, because you know how we've become more critical of the volume? like the soundstage that a lot of the Marvel and Star Wars shows will use, mm -hmm. I thought the volume looked better yeah. than than a lot of these artificial environments did. So, okay. But, guy, I mean, a couple of things I just couldn't get away from. First of all, one of the things I hate about any movie that does this, the bad guys, there's no nuance. There's no nuance. The bad guys are all... Up, turn the dial up to 11, the most vile evil, every single person involved with it. I mean, you saw in the trailers that, you know, she's living in this little farm community, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the soldiers come. Every single soldier is a rapist. <laughs> Except for one kid. One kid ends up being an, an okay guy. But I'm there, like every single one of them. And there's no nuance to it, right? There's not, well, maybe, no, it's like, hey, you girl, watch this, everybody. Come here, new girl, and uh, now I'm going to deflower her, and oh. I'm going to shoot everybody. Like, like all the bad guys were just pure evil. Tried their best to make the one bad guy, the Jew hunter, Christoph Waltz from Inglorious Bastards. Like, they tried so hard to make this one guy the Jew hunter. But, the, I mean, all that kind of stuff. But the worst part is some of the most atrocious dialogue. I was I was telling Jonathan when I came in, oh boy. there's yeah. dialogue in this movie that would be fine if you wrote it as a synopsis for somebody to read later. Yeah, like voiceover? Yeah. But no, no, not even, not even in the movie, but you're just reading a synopsis, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like, <clears throat> there's this scene where Sophia Batella sit, is sitting around a campfire with a guy and literally, I'm not kidding you, I timed it this morning. Launches into a six-minute exposition dump. Talking like no people actually talk. Like, remember, she's sitting around a campfire talking to a guy. And it, it read like you're reading a synopsis. I was born of blood and war with no love and no tenderness. They made me their machine of death. And, and like, they're like, this whole thing is going on. And it's like, I'm reminded of what Harrison Ford said to George Lucas when reading the Star Wars script, when he said, George, you can write this shit, but you can't say it. 
And I was just like thinking, oh, somebody should have said that to the screenwriters of this movie. You can write that and that'll look fine in the synopsis. But you can't say that shit because nobody talks like, <laughs> like that. Like at, at the time this happened, I was like, oh, this guy is trying to get in sweet with uh, Sophia's character. And then when she started doing that speech, I was like, I think he probably just changed his mind. He doesn't want to. Just that. killed his boner. Yeah, he just, <laughs> just totally to killed his boner. She but it, it's twice. like literally, it's a sick, guys, it is a six minute exposition dump. And it's like, it, it became a running joke familiar. in the room because it's like, it, it, like every, like so many times in the movie, it's like, okay, it's story time. It's story time where a character stops what they're doing and to tell a story. Yeah. And, and that's fine at the dial shot. But then near the end of the movie, there's this little skirmish. I won't give you any of the details or any of the context, but there's this little skirmish between like 20, 30 individuals, like a little skirmish. Jaimon Hans is one of them. And at the end of the skirmish, Jaimon Hans is just standing there with four of his friends right? Four of his friends. Remember, small skirmish, 20, 30 people involved. And Jaimon Hansu launches into this brave heart speech. This will be sung about in the songs. This will send ripples through the galaxy for on this day, you know, farmers and blah stood up to the might of the Imperium of the blah, blah, blah. And I'm watching like, that, that's, that's not how this character would talk. That's not how anybody would talk. The, the it would have been great if like he turned around and everyone had walked away. Yeah, everybody, everybody was sleeping. <laughs> Guys, we want to thank a sponsor of this video, Factor. This bustling holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel you on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all your holiday to-dos. Cross meal prepping off your list this holiday season with Factor. Skip the meal planning, grocery shopping, chopping, prepping, and cleaning up, and get Factor fresh, never frozen meals delivered to your door. They're ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Choose from 35 plus chef crafted meals every week that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences. Looking for calorie conscious options over the holidays that don't skimp on the flavor? Try delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. And Factor isn't just for dinner. Count on extra convenience any time of the day with an assortment of 55 plus add-ons to suit various preferences and tastes. So guys, head to factormeals.com slash campia50 and use the code CAMPIA50 to get 50% off. That's code CAMPIA50 at factormeals.com slash CAMPIA50 to get 50% off. The only person that actually <laughs> talked normal to me in this whole uh, first part was uh, Charlie Hunnam's character. He actually was normal. Like, I, I, well, at least I didn't notice anything glaring or like, but everyone had those solo speeches where it's like, I was like, is there a better way to lay out the groundwork of this film, like telling us what's going on and where these people are from, other than this way? Was there any other way they could have done that? I would have even gone for the scrolling Star Wars thing that just explained everything. Yeah, but than... now now listen, let me let me mention a couple of things that I think worked. <clears throat> um, you know, standard to a Zack Snyder movie, Zack Snyder does great he makes a great backdrop. And what I mean by that is the background world building about kind of introducing us to the world in which this story is taking place. Really interesting. Yeah, I was interested in right? that. Right? Like, I, I think they he paints a picture of this is the galaxy that this story is taking place in. And that galaxy, that backdrop, narratively, is really quite interesting. And I think sets the stage of a really good playground mm -hmm. to tell a great story with great compelling characters, hopefully with some great dialogue and all that kind of stuff within this sandbox of a world. And I thought that was done very well. I'm, I'm very intrigued by the Anthony Hopkins robot. Um, you, they show the robot a lot in the uh, trailers. The robot's only in about five minutes of the movie, at least this one. But I was very intrigued by the, again, the background story yes. of what this robot is, what these robots are, and why these robots are the way they are. Very intriguing, very interesting, and actually quite very original. Um, didn't do anything with it, 
maybe they will in the second part. <clears throat> Didn't do anything with it. Um, so there was uh, that. Um, Robert brings up the slow mo button. Yeah. Right the, the oh, yeah. Okay. I got to mention this. It became a running joke in the room. I feel like Zack Snyder was sitting in the room with the editor and they just put one giant button in front of Zack Snyder and it's a big slow mo button. And like, Zack Snyder was just hammering that. If that movie was did not have all the slow mo in it, it would have been about a 35 minute long movie. <laughs> there is so much slow mo in this movie. Yeah, it's that was crazy. pretty. That was pretty funny. But those first two things that you've just mentioned, that were the backdrop and the robot, those two things were the things that kept me watching because I was so interested in finding out uh, the execution of of how he did it may not have been that good, but just. Just those two premises right there, the robot and the the story of this this lady. And, and the, the mythology of the royal family, right? With I the wanted to find out more. Stuff yeah, like that. I wanted yeah. to find out more. Great backdrop information that where you could tell something really cool. And and before anybody comes at me with, well, John, you know it's this is part one. You are still responsible for making each individual movie a complete feeling movie, right? Star Wars was just part one, but they made it feel like a complete movie. Empire was just the middle chapter, but they made it feel like a complete movie. And I, yeah, I, I got to say this, I now have, I mean, it was going to happen eventually. As, as long as Zack Snyder keeps making movies, eventually I would have a second Zack Snyder movie that I don't like. But I, I got to tell you guys, I was, I was really disappointed in this movie. And, and here's the thing I regret I have to say the most. Because for years, you guys have heard me talk about Sophia Batella. I really like Sophia Batella. Every time she's been in a movie, granted, she's always had these small roles, but she's always made the most out of those small roles. And one of the things that I found most fascinating about Rebel Moon is, is I'm really curious to see, can Sophia Batella step up and now lead a film? And I, I, I think the answer is no. I don't think she has the talent. She hasn't, let, let me rephrase, let me rephrase. I don't think she has refined her talent enough yet to be the lead of a film because while admittedly she was saddled with some really awful dialogue, a really talented actress, a more experienced or, or, or a little bit more of a refined actress could have taken some of that dialogue and elevated it with the, what they put in with their performance. We've seen Charlize Theron do that. We've seen, we've seen a lot of actresses be able to do that. And I, while I still want to see what Sophia Batella can become, I, and I hate saying it, but I just feel like I watched this movie and I thought she was not ready to be the lead in the film yet. I will, I will play devil's advocate sure. here uh, just a little bit. Where she didn't have a long exposition that she had to memorize and say, when she was just like chatting normal with <clears throat> other characters, I meant it, it felt good. I mean, it looked I good. Know, it felt pretty monotone but, but to me. Because I only bring that up because when uh, Jaimon Hansu did a speech, he talked exactly like she talked. I mean, oh, all those all. speeches were not like, at all. No, he was like, raw, raw. He like well, he like it, I, it, it was night and me day. A bit. I mean, it wasn't great, but yeah. it, it they were done very different. But when did you put that on the director too to push? Absolutely, the like hundred percent. He he would have watched that and been like, oh, that's not good. Like some directors bring out the best in some some actors. Like from what I've yeah. seen, maybe maybe she has it in her. Maybe I don't know. What well, it, it wasn't great. But I'll, I'll give her another chance. And also, I had one question for you. Watching this movie, if there really is a director's cut, did you like it enough to watch that? No. I would. I did. I liked it enough where I would give that director's cut a, a watch. But here's the thing. I would watch the director's cut, but not because I thought it was good enough. I, w I will watch the director's cut because Zack Snyder has said that this four hour long director's cut thing is com a completely different movie. He said, he said, it's a totally different movie. So I'm like, Oh, okay. I'll watch that <laughs> one. And maybe it'll be better. I, I mean, look, somebody just asked, did, did I think it was worse than sucker punch? No, I think it's better than sucker punch. Uh, but I am disappointed because I've been on, I haven't disliked how, when did sucker punch come out? Hold on a second. 
Sucker Punch okay. came out in 2011. I have not disliked a Zack Snyder movie in 12 years. It's been 12 years since I didn't like one of his movies. And unfortunately for me, this the streak has been uh, the streak has been broken. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, at so. least we had some good food, some good ice cream. While you could we have had that it. without the movie, though. Yeah, good. Yeah. Mo- and you know, it brought us together. It was a reason to bring us together and watch some stuff. Yep, so. absolutely. Just look at the bright side. Come on. And uh, hey, it's got nowhere to go but up. Yeah, <laughs> that's the the second one comes out. I think in March. Is that what it said at the end that it I comes out in March? It, oh, I thought it was longer than that. It's uh, either March or May. It was one of it was one of the M months, but I think it said at the I'll end that, that it comes out in March. People in the live chat, let let us know when that uh, when that second one comes out. Again, I think it's March or May, but they're saying April. Oh, April. Yeah, that's what I thought. It I said thought April. for sure it was one of the M months. Okay, yeah, so April it was 19th. after March, before May, so April right in the 19th. middle. Okay, so maybe April nineteenth. I mean, it gets better. I, yeah. Oh, well, whatever. Well, we'll see. Rebel Moon, whatever. Rebel Moon. That's my poster quote. Rebel Moon, whatever. Uh, it is what it is. But hey, hopefully some of you guys watched it and enjoyed it and had a good time and maybe saw some more diamonds in the rough than I did and maybe thought some of the negative stuff wasn't so negative. I mean, that's the great thing about movies. It all hits us in different ways. And, and hopefully you some of you guys liked it more than I did. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.